I'm going to show you how to create your own program using a tool called Scratch. So that you can create a program along with me, pause this video whenever you need to and repeat the steps on your computer. Here is how your finished project will look. To start any Scratch program, click on the green flag. And when I do that, I can click on any of these blinking objects and they'll tell me which symbol machine it is and they'll give me a demonstration. So if I click on the X, it tells me it's a wedge, it hits the log. If I click on the paint roller, it's going to tell me it's a wheel and axle and paint the wall. And if I click on the box, it'll tell me it's on an inclined plane and go up into the truck. So to stop any scratch program, click on the red stop sign. To save you some time, we created a blank project that has just the pictures loaded so you can add your programming logic. Ask your teacher how to get to this project. But when you get there, you can click on the See Inside link, which you can do on any program on the Scratch website. And it's a great way to learn computer programming by looking at someone else's program. So the way Scratch is laid out is it has a stage and it has sprites. And a sprite can be anything. It can be a person or an animal. In this case, it can be a bucket or a box. All the things that you see on this stage are sprites. And if I scroll down here, I can see all, all of them. So sprites can do three things. They can have a script, which makes them do things, like move or say something. They can have a costume, where they can change their appearance by changing their costume. Or they can play sounds. You can either take a sound from the Scratch library, or you can click on the microphone and record your own sound. So before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and sign into the Scratch website so that I can save my work back to the Scratch website. Ask your teacher what your login and password should be. Now I'm on someone else's project, right, because I clicked see inside. And so I see a button here called Remix. What I want to do is go ahead and click on OK. I want to remix this project, which means I want to make a copy of it that's all my own so that I can make my own changes. The next thing I'll do is give it a name. I'm going to call it Kim's Simple Machines. Ask your teacher what they'd like you to call your program. You need to name it something so that you can tell your program from one of your fellow students. Don't use your last name, but it's okay to use your, your first name if your teacher tells you that that's okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make that X rotate down and hit the log. So in order to do that, I'm going to go um, to the scripts for the X. Make sure you pick the X. So I click on the X, and then I see um, the events menu under scripts. Every script starts based on an event. The event tells it when does this script run. And in this case, it runs when you click on the X. So I'm going to start my script with when this sprite is clicked. So the next thing I need to do, I need to make it say something, which is under the looks menu. It's going to say, and I just drag that right over and click it in like a Lego. And then I can type in here with my keyboard, I'm a wedge. And it's going to play for two seconds, which I think is plenty of time to read that short message. The next thing I need to do is make it rotate down and hit the log. In order to make that do, to do that, I'm going to have it repeat, um, make it go six times, the motion of turning itself. So it's going to turn a little bit six times. And when it does that, it's going to look like it's moving toward the log. At the bottom, I want it to make a sound. So I'll go to the sound menu and I'm going to say play drum and um, have it play for one quarter note, one beat. The next thing, I'll go to the control menu and I'm going to make it go back up. So I'm going to say repeat again six times because it took me six times down. I'll take it six times back up. Go to the motion menu and make sure I make it go the right way. Click that right in there. So any code that goes in these repeat blocks is going to do it that many times. So if I wanted to run this script, 
I can either click the green flag, which would cause any, all the scripts to run at the same time, although at this point I only have one script, or to run just this script and watch it run by itself, you can click on the header and you'll see it working. It says, I'm a wedge, went down, hit the log, looks perfect. So that's how you do the, the X. The next item that we're going to program is the paint roller. So I click on the paint roller and then I need to add its script. So same thing, I go to the events menu and I'm going to say when this sprite is clicked. I want it to say something from the looks menu. It's going to say I'm a wheel and axle and then it's going to play a sound. I'm going to go to the sounds menu. I've already loaded the sound from the script from the uh, scratch library called drip drop. So it's going to make that sound and then I want it to glide down the wall. In order to do that there is a function called glide under the motion menu. So I'll go here. I want it to glide down and I also want it to glide back up to its starting position. So I'm going to have it glide down slowly for three seconds and then zip right back up for one second back up to its starting location. So the starting location is already set for me. Notice these X and Y coordinates. Every sprite in Scratch, the way you can tell where it is or where it's going or where you want it to end up is based on its X and Y coordinates. X is how far is it left and right. Y is how far is it up and down. If you think X is like a man, it's got legs, it goes left and right on the ground, and Y is more like a bird, it goes up and down because the, the letter Y has like wings. That might help you to remember that. But without knowing too much geometry, all you need to know is X and Y are how Scratch knows where things belong. So I know when it gets to the, the this is where it is right now, negative 156X, negative 114Y. I want it to go down to a location that I'm just going to estimate. So I'm going to pull the sprite down about where I want it to go and a good trick is now that I've moved it there the menu changes here and it tells me where it really is. Actually any of these sprites do. This one does as well. It says now I'm at negative 157, negative 193. So I'm going to change my Y value when I get to the bottom. I'm going to have it glide down to negative 193. So it's going to glide down to this position and then glide back up to its starting position. So in this case only Y is changing. So I run that script and I watch it go. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is with the box. The box goes up the incline plane and into the truck. This is not quite as easy as the last one because we're changing both X and Y, right? Because it's not only going left and right, it's also going up a little bit. So it's going in the Y direction and the X direction. So first let's click on the box. And then I'm going to add a script, which is always going to start from the events menu when this sprite is clicked. So when this sprite is clicked, I'm going to have it first of all say something. It's going to say, I'm on an inclined plane. And then it's going to go up and into the truck. Now, the way I'm going to do that is similar to the last one. I go to the motion menu. I'm going to have it glide up into the truck and then glide back down to the bottom. Have it glide up slowly and then zip back down. Now, in this case, um, it's going to glide up to the location where I want it to go. And this is where it is right now, negative 1, negative 143. So I'm just going to very carefully with my mouse drag it up to where I think it looks like it's pretty much in the truck. That looks good. And then I'm going to cheat and look at what these values are. And that's what I want it to be. So I'm going to have it go to 157 and 80, uh, negative 89y. So I'll move it back down about where it was, although my code will actually take care of putting it back where it was exactly. If I click on this, it's going to 
say I'm an inclined plane and go up and into the truck. Don't worry too much that it didn't go, it went in front of the truck and not behind the truck because I added some code to the truck to say when the green flag is clicked, in other words, when this program starts, this is going to go to the front, which will make the box go behind. And if you don't believe me, I'll click on the green flag here. And you'll see when I click on the box, when both scripts are running, it goes up into the truck. Great, so that one is done. The next one we need to do is the hardest one, is the well, because we have two sprites that are going to do things. The crank is going to do something, and it's going to tell the bucket that that sprite needs to go down and come back up. So two sprites will do something. Let's start with the well handle. What the well handle needs to do is, uh, besides um, say who it is, what it is, go to the looks menu, and I'll say... I'm a pulley. Did that last time too. Then I'm going to say um, I wanted to repeat cranking. And if you notice when I showed the costumes originally, this sprite has three costumes it has a down position, a middle position, and an up position. And if you just keep changing costumes, it'll give you the illusion that that um, crank is turning. So I'm going to go to the control menu and I'm going to repeat. I'm going to pick 12 times because I have three costumes and I want it to be evenly divisible so that it ends up in the same position where it started. Um, and a quick way to change costumes is to say next costume. You could also specify which costume you want to switch to by choosing this one, but this one I just wanted to keep choosing the next costume over and over. I'm also going to go to the control menu and make it wait just for a little bit, half a second, so that it doesn't crank so quickly that you can't tell that it's cranking. So if I click on this uh, header, it says I'm a pulley, and there it goes. So my crank is cranking. The next thing I have to do is I have to have it talk to the bucket and tell the bucket to do something. So let's send a broadcast. I go to events and I say broadcast a message. I'm going to click it right in between there and they will just connect to each other. And I'm going to give it a new message. I'm going to say drop, oops, drop the bucket. So this is telling anybody who's listening, time to drop the bucket. Now I need to make the well bucket listen to that event. So I'm going to start with a new script starter here that says when I receive, drop the bucket. So when it receives that event, it's going to glide down. And then it's just the way we've done the last ones. I'm going to glide down and glide back up. Glide down by three. I'm going to make it glide up slowly as well. We don't want to spill our water. So I'm going to glide down by three to the location that I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say pull it down. I want it to go about this far because I don't want it to become disconnected and look like it's not uh, attached to the well anymore. And that location is 112.98. So I'm going to just change the Y. Because X is left and right, I don't care if it moves left and right. I just want it to move in the Y direction, up and down. So if I do this, it was already moved down. It'll move right back up. Perfect. So um, if I click the green flag and I try it, they should operate kind of together. So that's the last simple machine 
if you've done this along with me, you've done great work. The next thing you might want to do would be to make them blink like I did in the sample. And there'll be an additional video to follow if you choose to do that. But I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that it inspires you to, to write your own computer programs and to explore the other programs that other students have written on the Scratch website. So thanks.